This video will prove that the Acosta White House clip released by Sarah Sanders had not been doctored. First, we'll explain in detail all technical aspects related to the Sanders clip. Then we'll prove that all motion artifacts are the result of typical conversion from different formats and frame rates, not any deliberate human intervention. Let's start with a detailed technical analysis of all factors that produce the visible motion artifacts in the clip. We'll cover the root cause of the issue, incompatible frame rates, and how video software processes them. Then we'll reveal how not even a single so-called expert has synced the clips properly. We begin the technical discussion with the source material. You'd think this would be straightforward. As it turns out, the source itself introduces the first frame-related issue, before we even get to subsequent, more severe issues. Most of the so-called experts don't realize, that there are two versions of the C-SPAN source. One with the Chiron, or the caption at the bottom, and one without. The Sanders clip is based on the one with the Chiron. In this frame, from the clip without a Chiron, look at the arm of the White House aide. The illuminated part of her right arm is just barely visible under Acosta's arm. But in the clip with the Chiron, there's no equivalent frame. We can find a frame just before it. Or a frame just after it. But not an exact match. That's because these two clips are already shifted by half a frame. It's unclear what caused this small shift, possibly a double export at C-SPAN. Several of the so-called experts trotted out by the media can even get the source right. Abish Shapiro for Associated Press, gives his whole analysis comparing to the wrong source. Robert Lindemann for USA Today does the same thing. The main cause of the motion artifacts in the Sanders clip are different video formats, and their incompatible frame rates, and thus the need to process and rearrange the frames several times over and over. Frame rate is how often one still image is shown to create the impression of motion. The two main formats at play are GIF and MP4. We know this, because MP4 is the standard for videos downloaded from Twitter, YouTube, and C-SPAN. We know the clip tweeted by the Daily Wire and for America was a GIF because it was plainly tagged as a GIF by Twitter. This tag, and its implication, apparently went unnoticed by the so-called experts. Seems like media managed to find only those experts, who somehow know nothing about formats and incompatible frame rates. Maybe because the story of alleged doctoring sells better than an accurate explanation. The GIF format is old, last revised in 1989. MP4 is new, last revised in 2003. GIF arose before the internet, as a simple way to show small animations on PCs. It's strictly a computer format, never tied to film or video. It's very simple but virtually any device and browser can display it. MP4 was established after the rise of the internet, with the specific goal of merging the worlds of video and computers. It's far more capable, but it requires more advanced software to handle it. Because GIF was created just for PCs, its frame rate was a simple multiple of 1 one hundredth of a second. Since MP4 was created for video, its frame rates were inherited from television and film, the most common being 30 frames per second, or more exactly 29.97. Converting frames from a video to a GIF, at its typical rate of roughly 15 FPS, is relatively easy. Depending on the software, either every other frame is removed, or pairs of frames are blended together. The problem arises when it comes to playing it back at the correct speed. As you can see, Multiples of 1 100th don't line up with integer frame rates, like 15 frames per second. Some GIF converters may try to set variable delays on individual frames, to get closer to 15 FPS. The problem is that this can easily end up being either ignored, or worse, misinterpreted by the playback software. Browsers compound this issue even further by either clipping all speeds below 6 100ths, or setting a hard rate to 10 100ths, or some combination thereof. In summary, the actual playback rate of a GIF is unpredictable. In the case of the GIF retweeted by For America and Daily Wire, the frame rate is reported as 14.57 FPS. This is the file Paul Joseph Watson imported into his Vegas Pro software, to create his zoomed-in, MP4 version. Yeah, here's the screenshot from the edit in Sony Vegas. Importantly, in Paul's video, we can see the frame rate of his project, 14.985 FPS. 
It appears that the Vegas software, upon seeing the 14.57 frame rate in the input GIF, checked its list of common MP4 frame rates for the closest match, and found the value of 14.985. That is exactly half of 29.97, or the standard video rate. This instantly creates a problem, because 14.57 does not fit neatly into 14.985. The software is forced to interpolate existing frames to create new ones. Depending on the settings, it may also end up doubling some individual frames, all in order to fit the 14.57 input into the new 14.985 project. This is the step that most likely introduced most of the motion artifacts we see. Very importantly, this frame rearrangement is a mechanical, automated process, and thus the changes it creates will produce a regular, repeated pattern including any possible frame doublings, as the two frame rate frequencies interact with each other in endless recurring cycles. Without getting into details, a few settings in Vegas affect this process, they determine how the frames will be interpolated, possibly doubled, and how groups of horizontal lines in the frames will be mixed, possibly creating blurry, horizontal and vertical shifts. Here's a demonstration of frame doubling. With this setting, all frames in this sequence are slightly different, including frame 35. With this setting, frame 35 ends up being doubled. Another frame rate change took place following Paul's project. Paul's project is at 14.985, half the standard video rate. But the Sanders clip is at 29.97, the standard video rate. This means that Paul's clip at some point was doubled in frame rate, either by Twitter or someone else. This probably introduced more distortions, but one is worth mentioning. A frame that was already doubled in Paul's clip, would likely be repeated again which means you'll see three identical frames in a row. This explains the presence of tripled frames in the Sanders clip. All these artifacts are typical for quick, non-professional conversions. There's nothing unusual or deliberate about them. For professional work, they can be minimized or eliminated by a videographer with experience and time. You may think, okay, we started and ended with 29.97. So we have two clips that are equivalent, except one has motion artifacts. False. There's a big difference between these two clips. All the frame rearrangements we've discussed introduced a subtle time stretching across the entire length of the clip. An equal number of frames in both clips now represent slightly different periods of time. Here's an analogy. Imagine you film a scene with two cameras, a film camera, at 24 FPS, and a video camera, at 30 FPS. For one second of footage, the film camera will produce 24 frames, the video camera 30 frames. Both of these strips represent one second of time, but notice that these frames are not equivalent. Each video frame represent a shorter span of time compared to a film frame. 24 film frames represent a different period of time than 24 video frames. It makes no sense to compare these two clips frame by frame, because you're comparing different points in time. The exact same applies to the Sanders and C-SPAN clips, except the discrepancy is more subtle, as the time difference is spread fractionally across multiple frames. Despite their equal frame rates, the same number of frames, say 100, in both clips, represents different periods of time. One Sanders frame represents a slightly longer period of time compared to a C-SPAN frame. It makes no sense to compare them frame by frame, because you're comparing different points in time. Amazingly, not even a single so-called expert realized this, and synced the videos properly. All analyzes in which the so-called experts step frame by frame in both clips are thus worthless. We can roughly estimate by how much all these conversions affected the Sanders clip. We don't have the exact numbers for the first conversion to GIF, so we'll compute separate values for just the Paul's import, and one including an estimate for the first GIF conversion. Over the visible 102 frames, the Sanders clip, and the C-SPAN source represent time periods that differ by between 2.8 and 5.6 frames. This must be taken into account during any analysis. Here, at the bottom, we show the difference between the two clips when properly synced. Black means no difference. You will see some of the motion artifacts in the fast-moving areas, 
but nothing gets ahead of anything else, nor does anything lag throughout the clip. The image difference remains mostly black throughout. By analyzing each frame in the Sanders clip, we can find out which specific C-SPAN frames contributed to it. This lets us create this graph, showing how exactly frames in both clips map onto one another. On the x-axis are the Sanders frames. On the y are the C-SPAN frames, expressed as a relative offset. The size of each ellipse shows the contribution amount. If both clips represented the same period of time, we would see a straight, horizontal line. But this graph, as a whole, slopes down, which tells us that the clips represent slightly different periods of time. 102 frames in the Sanders clip represent about 5 frames less worth of time, compared to C-SPAN. This is what we expected. But most importantly, we see a regular, repeating, stair-step pattern, with characteristic frame triplets in equal intervals. This regular pattern proves that all adjustments to the frame sequence were done by a mechanical, automated process, such as frame rate conversions, not any human intervention. There is absolutely nothing special, or unusual, around the frames representing Acosta's motion. Any deliberate human slowdown or speed up would show up here as a wavy line. The claim that this clip was doctored to alter the motion is a lie. 